Cool. Hey everyone, it's Greg here and welcome to the Just A Meme podcast where we chat to teams using blockchain technologies to solve real world problems. Today we have a very special episode with one of the OGs of Ripple. Craig is an ex-engineer from the Ripple team who started there in 2014, which is pretty much at the beginning as far as as far as I remember. Um, now running Supermojo, a super slick checkout solution to make buying NFTs easier. Welcome Craig, thanks for giving us your time. Thank you, Greg. Very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, we got Craig and Greg. It's a, <laughs> a slight, slight twist, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, uh, kicking things off, the the Ripple connection. Well, well, actually, let's start before that. What were you doing before Ripple? Were you? I think I've talked to you before, and you said you came out of Stanford, was it? But you were doing stuff even before that. So, what's the yeah, sort yeah. of genesis there? Um, <laughs> So I started my career at Bloomberg, where I was doing analytics um, in the financial space. Um, I did a lot of stuff on rates and credit, um, and uh, and later on in structured finance stuff like mortgages and cash flows and stuff like that, cash flow generators and stuff like that. So um, cool stuff there. Fell in love with kind of financial technology. Went to Stanford for a MBA, and that's where I met Chris Larson. So Chris Larson, uh, the founder of, of Ripple, came to campus. And I wanted to talk about cryptocurrency, um, true to, you know, MBAs who can tend to be, you know, I'm one of them, so I can say tend to be lemmings at times. Nobody wanted to talk about cryptocurrency. <laughs> it was all about like Google product management. That's the only thing you wanted to go to. Yeah. Um, and so I ended up having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Chris. Um, and I understood the problems that he was trying to solve with um, with payments Yeah. Um, and joined um, officially in 2015 running product for uh, for payments at Ripple. And wow. turn that into uh, turn that into RippleNet and ODL and the the massive multi billion dollar business that that is today. So that was quite a ride. Yeah, I mean that. Well, even just getting to access to Chris on the one on one that sounds like crazy now. <laughs> like uh, completely yeah. different world. <laughs> yeah, I mean back then, back then these were like very very early days, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Ethereum didn't exist. This yeah, was right after was um, 2015, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. And yeah. this is right after Vitalik was uh, Vitalik was actually an intern at Ripple. Yes. Um, after his time as like a, a an editor at Bitcoin Magazine. So like these were just these were wild times. Brock Pierce was running around. Anyways, um, <laughs> a lot of stories from uh, from those days. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. To be in that early forming community must have been a hell of experience. And so, yeah, yeah. You, you product managed uh, like Ripple well what what became ripple net and yep. odl so i guess this was all pre-product effectively for ripple or did they have a few customers or were they just looking at the token or, or what was sort of happening at the time because yeah well, well the, the the company i joined was was officially called ripple labs mm. um and there was a lot of just incredible applications for enterprises okay, that yeah. um that were were being built um on XRPL, which at the time was like the only choice versus um, versus Bitcoin, which yeah. for a variety of reasons doesn't lend itself well for like instantaneous payments and um, and low value payments, even mm -hmm. even back then, um, even even before the, the the Bitcoin Cash split. And so, cross border payments was something I understood, and Swift was something I understood from my days at Bloomberg, um, yeah. and built a built a product around that. Um, worked with a bunch of partners. Ripple had had a couple partners at that time. Um, some of the early banks uh, in Europe using oh, okay, um, cool. some yeah. stuff we're working on. Um, yeah, and then from there, just scaled it. Went around the world, you know, selling in countries everywhere, talking to folks, and you know, everywhere from Beirut to, geez, Sao Paulo. I've talked Amazing. to banks and financial institutions. Yeah, I bet there was so much like education, <laughs> educational content that you had to do as part of that because it must have been. Like, what is this <laughs> crazy thing you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, there, there, there was, and that I mean, that was a big learning and something that you know we're applying to SuperMojo is the technology is really cool. Technology mm. is really cool, and as a technologist myself, it's really easy to get wrapped up in yeah. that <laughs> and go in and try to talk about Byzantine fault tolerance and stuff like that. And then like, they don't actually care, right? Um, yeah. The 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 what really I think dawned on me was when you're trying to explain to your parents or someone to use email, like you don't want to come in and be like, let's start with TCP IP or like SMTP servers. It's like, no, no, no. Like <laughs> now you can communicate on a direct basis. Right. That was the same story with payments. It's like, now you can send money instantaneously anywhere in the world without yeah. having a pre-funded Nostro account. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> right. I, for these bankers, it's indistinguishable from magic because they don't have to know the tech. 
Yeah. Um, and that was the growth. That was the, that was the seed that then kind of became this massive, uh, this massive business for Ripple. Nice. So yeah, you were running that up until I guess a few years back now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I ran that for seven years, um, okay, seven yeah. years until, uh, until just about a year ago, um, went to, to start super mojo. And yeah. The reason I started super mojo is because I saw a lot of the, with NFTs, I see a lot of the same makings as what I saw with cryptocurrency in 2014, 2015. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. That's largely misunderstood. Insight. Yeah. Yeah. They're <laughs> largely misunderstood. Um, and so because of that, they're easily dismissible from people, even in cryptocurrencies yeah. as a fad or something stupid or a plaything. Um, but I've, I've worked with them directly. I've touched them. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I've seen the magic. I've seen the mojo. And so the people who really move the industry forward are the ones who make it widely accessible, who obfuscate the complexity of the technology and let people touch the magic. And that's what was the synthesis of um, Super Mojo, of making NFTs easier and accessible for, for everybody, just yeah. like what Ripple did for uh, for payments and you know banks. Yeah. So you, you start up this company. Um, have you got sort of like a, a product? pre like a sort of POC that you were running at that time to feel like you're confident enough to step away or had it just sort of you felt like that was the next chapter in your sort of growth and development to go out and start your thing because this pain was so <laughs> sort of acute and you could see where it was heading <laughs> yeah I I had enough um I had enough confidence um yeah but my conviction was even higher than my confidence. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> high conviction, medium confidence, um, where I was comfortable going out and, you know, without having a, a product built or anything like that yeah. uh, to go tackle this, this market. Um, and so I was lucky enough to, um, to work with my, uh, my, my co-founder, Amir Sarhangi, um, yeah. from Jive Mobile, sold the company to Google, which is like the foundation of Google Messenger now. Oh, wow. Two, uh, okay. Two yeah. out of every... <laughs> I, I flex on this harder than he does. I think it's something like two out of every seven human beings on the planet, because there's the ones who have Android phones are, are in some way using his product. So wow. it's been amazing to work with him as well. Yeah. And that also led to the confidence that we could go out and, uh, and tackle the space. Oh, amazing. So yeah, I guess that's, you go out, you raise, I think it was 6 million I saw round. Um, yeah. Was that the first money in that you got in the <laughs> sort of heady days of the bull run? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was, um, I, I think we closed in April. Um, okay. We have an awesome set of investors. We have 18, 18 investors, yeah. um, both in the traditional world, uh, as well as kind of the Web3 world, which yeah, has been really that. amazing. You got quite a nice sort of spread across yeah, the old yeah. old stuff and yeah. new stuff, and, it, and that was definitely yeah. intentional. And that that took a that took a lot of effort. Um, yeah, in a short amount of time. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, that, like the idea is, you really got to bridge those two worlds, and that's yeah. um, that's not just in the in how we think about the product. That's how we think about a lot of things, and being able to being able to be that. Hey, don't worry about the technology and having that handled, but you can go and offer solutions both to users and to artists creators or brands out there yeah very interesting like with a with a package that they you know can use and don't necessarily have to understand the underpinnings like that's pretty compelling um and so yeah. our investors have really helped us with introductions there and uh, and kind of creating that network that you need okay amazing and so yeah you launched the product did you launch it first for like ethereum or was it like an xrpl thing first or how did it all sort of then <laughs> come together yeah. when you started commercializing yeah, so XRPL is um, is near and dear to my heart, um, but XLS twenty um, wasn't live yet. And yep. So the first thing that we uh, first thing that we went live with was Ethereum. Yeah, and we've took a lot of those learnings and applied it to our launch with XRPL. Yeah, and so we have some we have some launches coming up on XRPL. Um, some really interesting NFT drops. Um, first one being a, a drop by Justin Bua, incredible artist. Um, who's done some like amazing art, but yeah. that art has a lot of things that actually unlock experiences that, you know, he's going to be announcing shortly and they'll nice. be, they'll, they'll be issuing that over our platform. And so we'll take that on XRPL, mint it, and then allow people to pay for it with a credit card and handle uh, custody, which means no reserve, no dealing with reserve uh, okay, balances yeah. or anything like that, which I think is going to be groundbreaking because there's a lot of people who want to get more involved with XRPL that have difficulty with some of the um, existing hurdles on terms of getting up and running. Yeah, because it. I mean, so we're sort of on the other end of it. We're looking at the data, and yep. that is very, very variable um, of what people have done. And yeah, I imagine there is quite a hurdle of getting a creator from 
zero to one, as it were, feeling, okay, I want to do this NFT project on the XRPL. Oh my God. <laughs> Why is all this? Okay, now I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what's, what's great, I think what's great about our model is um, creators come to us. Usually they have ideas. They, mm. they invariably have actual assets that they want to put on, usually digital assets they want yeah. to use, like usually just the image. Um, all it takes is they give us they give us the the image and they let us know the kind of utility that they want to unlock. And our platform handles the rest. Oh, wow. And so we put that on chain. Um, we create a storefront that they can use or a button they can embed in their site to allow yeah. um, credit card based purchases. People buy with a credit card. Um, and then the other cool thing that the creators like is we deliver them dollars or any kind of foreign currency they want or stable coins. And so nice. a lot of folks yeah. are worried about doing their internal treasury with like crypto and the, like the tax yeah. implications <laughs> record. Like, so we solve all that. I think the only thing is like if you're a creator, and you have a, an NFT that has actual utility that you want to get out. And we can talk for hours about what like actual utility looks in the space. Cause it's, it's blooming and I'm so excited yeah. to see it. Um, Super Mojo handles the rest. Yeah. So that's, it's way more expansive than I initially thought cause, you know, in the introduction, I said, check out, but it sounds like a lot more than that. If you're, you know, plug and play utility platform, sh sh come Shopify store, come <laughs> like yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> Yeah, so the, um, I mean, you, you, you're absolutely right from the user perspective, it's a checkout, right? The user perspective, it's checkout. That is kind of the tip of the iceberg yeah. um, in terms of what's actually going on in the background. But, and I feel super strongly about this, the users don't have to know about that. Yeah. All the users have to know is they're making a purchase that feels like an Amazon-based purchase. Yeah. And then this actual token that you have, you know, in many cases, I don't even know if we're going to be using the term NFT in the future. It's just a, it's a digital asset that exists within a wallet that they can interface with that they have yep. clickable buttons to redeem or 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 burn that token for whatever utility the artist creator brand has. It's like you don't have to know it's an NFT. You just know it's this really cool thing that you're holding in a uh, in in a passwordless login. Yeah, I know. I think that's what we've seen with Reddit, right? Probably the most, arguably the most successful NFT drop launch, whatever. Uh, Today, I mean, I know Starbucks and stuff have probably more yep. NFT holders, <laughs> but even that, even for that, they probably don't know it's an NFT. Most most of the time, it's just a, a card in their thing. <laughs> That's exactly right. And what um, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't, aren't, at least aren't talking about, is Polygon, who has had a couple of these successful brands come yeah. on their platform. They have more NFT transactions than Ethereum. Yeah, like 20 to 20 to 30 percent more. And that's three months running. Now, the dollar value um, volume is less than Ethereum because Ethereum is doing a bunch of the like the blue chip board apes and punks. And yeah, there's yeah. a lot of interesting volume taking place there. Um, but like low value, high volume transactions are per are perfect for this space. Yeah. And that's that's really, in my mind, where XRPL shines. Yeah. And so that's something that I have a lot of excitement on because um, XRPL is the rightful owner of of these kind of NFT projects. And that's yeah, that that is quite a, a heck of a statement because it it definitely gets <laughs> pushed under the rug a lot. XRPL and you know various <laughs> industry leaders is not their favorite <laughs> token <laughs> in the world. Yeah. So yeah, now now keep in mind though, um, this is another thing that I get really excited about is the crypto natives over time. In a healthy environment, and this is happening, they become less and less and less of a voice yeah. because the real voice out there are the 99.7% of people who, again, just want to understand, who just want to have utility of it, right? Yeah. It's not like, you know, there's people who are going to argue about the kind of databases that you should use in, 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 in infrastructure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, AWS as a user, versus GCP yeah, versus... <laughs> as a user, like you don't care and you don't necessarily even have to know that, right? Yeah. And that I think is what's going to happen. And um, XRPL really shines in that environment because technically it has um, it has a lot of advantages that other chains don't. And then you layer on the the uh, the sustainability aspect, which yeah. actually really matters to creators and brands. I underestimated how important that was. That's a really okay. big thing that they yeah. look at. So um, like qualitatively, qualitatively, people are saying to you like, this is actually, you know, this has to happen because. Bitcoin's killing the world is what mainstream sort yeah, of media it, sort of feeds us. That's right, and it, it's um like regardless of the arguments on on reality of the other chains, mm. the per the perception 
is definitely out there. Yeah. And the perception is, is that if you want an energy efficient um, digital asset ledger, XRPL is the place to go. Yeah. Um, and that gives that, that actually gives a massive leg up again, that I underestimated with these corporates and brands and creators who want to, you know, reach their customers in a new way. And that new way is, you know, through NFTs as a vehicle. Yeah. Cause cool. I mean, yeah, we'll kind of, kind of come on to enterprises cause that's a massive <laughs> evolving space for NFTs, yeah. especially, I mean, yes, you got the, probably like the long tail as it were of creators that the hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them that have now, you know, these communities that they can set up and sort of yep. monetize their work in a more direct way. But then you also exactly. have the enterprises like the Starbucks, like the Adidas, like the, like, like, like of the, the world. Nike. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and that has been a incredible growth story. Um, when you look at, at, at Nike creating a lot of excitement within their brands, mm. um, you know, one of the things that I think is very interesting for the brands in this space is Historically, and for po for folks who've been in XRPL, they've seen this on cryptocurrencies. The maximalist aspect, like the tribalism that is created by these tradable tokens, has been a bug. Right? Yeah. It's actually been a net deterrent of our um, of the growth of this industry. Brands look at that and they see that as a feature, not a bug. Right? And okay. so you're already seeing a lot of the. Um, a lot of this excitement of these various NFTs that are associated with brands of this tribalized nature of people getting really excited about them, of flexing yeah. them, of using them. Um, that's driving some really interesting user behavior. It's driving customer awareness and customer behavior. At the same time, it's actually driving revenue to the brands. Um, yeah. So Nike, Nike's, you know, total revenue is, you know, approaching $200 million from this. Yeah. Um, after their acquisition of artifact in, you know, December, 2021. So like, man, that's yeah. a that's a crazy world. Direct access to your customers. You don't have to go through Google anymore. Um, and there's an actual revenue play there. It's like, wow, that's a brave new world. Yeah. I mean, it, it was always the thing that in, you know, PPC performance marketing and stuff, if you could equal your funnel <laughs> conversion to the amount that you're putting into out the back end, that's like the holy grail of uh, sort of uh, performance yeah. marketing, digital marketing, as it were. And this is like that, but for a new set and you get all these extra benefits, it's... Yeah, it's just crazy. Yep. <laughs> I know uh, yeah, Ralph absolutely. Howell always says, like, can you imagine, like, the value of Disney if you actually capture that in a token? And you're talking, like, you know, trillions of cultural impact that they have. So, yep. it, yeah, it really is a crazy new world. Is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's quite refreshing to hear. I, I, you know, I talk to a lot of NF, NFT projects, especially in uh, the XRPL world. Mm -hmm. But to hear someone so bullish on it, who's worked with other stuff as well and it's not in that little tribe <laughs> that is the uh almost the bug <laughs> in uh, yeah. existing crypto so yeah that's really cool um sort of coming on then to super mojo and what that looks like you know in the future like what's the plan just to scale like crazy and build out more features more functionality integrate DeFi and stuff or like what's the, <laughs> what's kind of the plan yeah so the, the things that I get really excited about are on the user side, making the customer experience as easy as possible for folks to get involved with NFTs. Mm. What that looks like is all you need is a, essentially a, a phone number, an email, and a credit card. And that's how you can buy your way into the NFT space to actually see what, what's going on here. Mm. Um, that comes along with it, a wallet experience that allows users to not have to worry about anything technical. They're just logging in and you know, seeing the cool stuff and having the, the utility of the NFT directly in our platform. Yeah, That's on the user side. On the, um, on the partner side, you know, we are talking to so many creators in the space. We're talking to brands in the space right now. And we're also talking to marketplaces, uh, a number of them you've kind of had on your, your show um, okay. to allow on XRPL and other chains um, the use of credit cards for secondary purchases as well. Yeah. And so what that looks like, you can come in, you can pay with a credit card. We manage the actual crypto treasury on our back end, and we'll go out and acquire that NFT using XRP or whatever native currency that it's listed in. And so you start having this ecosystem through SuperMojo of creators and users and NFT platforms all being connected. And what I get really excited about is you start to scale that and you start to see network effects where you can start doing like gas transfers. You can start doing cross chain 
yeah. uh, type things where the user doesn't necessarily have to know what chain that NFT is on, or at least it's not like front and center when they're making a, a purchase based on, on utility. And I think as we can bring in more people into the space that they can see that it's not just, you know, it's not just like JPEGs, right? Yeah. There's reality here, um, whether it's token gated e-commerce or, or ticketing, like there's so much cool stuff here. Like we're in a position just to, to, to scale like crazy and go out and get some major brands uh, to do some really cool stuff directly to their users. And then beyond that, like then you start getting the stuff like providing liquidity between these different um nft projects yeah and there's a whole lot of stuff that exists there and there's a growing space on the DeFi side of of essentially um uh, collateralizing loans yeah. with nft yeah. and using <laughs> nfts as actual um real world assets so like using them as essentially bonds that are paying out various um you know various tokens to the holders of it now put aside the, the security conversations yeah for a second <laughs> because i think like this stuff is so cool that um, I, I think the U.S. is going to figure it out eventually. It'll be painful, but the U.S. will figure it out eventually. Mm. But the cat's out of the bag. The magic is there. There will be an environment where U.S. entrepreneurs can actually play in the space. And yeah. you put all that together with a platform that already has an established user base and a supply base from from creators. And man, you got something special. So that's what we're building at Supermojo. Yeah, no, it sounds like a, yeah, a massive, a quite all-encompassing vision is... Um is pretty uh yeah expansive <laughs> is probably the best word yeah for it. it's, it's a, a reason to get up in the morning which is a positive yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been really enjoying it um so far running your own startup after <laughs> leaving the job <laughs> yeah it's um you know it's a uh it is quite an adventure and it's something i've kind of been setting up to do um most of my life mm. most of my life it's you know it's, it's even why i went um to school a second time um, and so it's been amazing to kind of be able to chart your own course. Yeah, it does. You know, there are, um, there are founder anxieties that I <laughs> knew about academically. And when you feel them, they, they feel different than if you <laughs> they, read them in a they book. They hit different. <laughs> it hits different. Yeah, yeah. it hits different. But the, um, the waking up every day inspired and um, eager to go out and take a swing for that day and get the most out of it is incredible. Mm. It's uh it's it's a uh, it's an awesome although stressful at times it's an awesome way to live yeah i think that's an amazing point to sort of wrap up and uh, uh because i know a lot of the guys who listen to this are all uh, projects in xrpl and beyond so um yeah get out there <laughs> be inspired it's it yeah just, it's great <laughs> and if you are doing something on on any chain especially xrpl hit me up um i'm on twitter you may have seen this because i re retweeted it um, hit me up. Like, I'm, I'm sure we can help you with your project. Yeah. We'll drop all the uh, links that you need below. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's great to see such a, a, a breakout thing in the XRPL. I, I'm not sure we've quite seen that so far and you guys seem to be like leading the way. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see where you go next and, uh, what that does to the ecosystem, basically. I think it'd yeah. be amazing across all chains, not just XRP, but yeah, like you say, the network effects and stuff that come into play. It's going to be great. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Cool. Thanks for having me well, on, man. Thanks for, thanks for everyone who's uh, still here and tuning in. Um, yeah, this has been a Just a Mean podcast where we chat to guys using blockchain uh, to solve real world problems. Uh, please get involved. Give us a like, comments, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. All right. Cheers, Greg. Later.